Good evening, everyone. It is 5.30 and uh, time for us to get started. I'm really glad that you're here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amanda McIntyre, and this is the UVM OLLI yoga class. Um, OLLI is the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, which is um, through UVM's Continuing and Distance Education Program. Um, and they offer all kinds of amazing offerings um, for folks. Uh, right now, everything is, is pretty much virtual, but we've had on-campus classes in the past. Um, and if you're looking for ways to support OLLI, if you're not a member or you've been really enjoying these free um, yoga classes, if you go onto the OLLI website, you could join and become a member. Um, it's a really, really reasonable uh, annual um, membership fee to join. Um, and then you get access to all kinds of great discounted programming, that sort of thing. Or um, you can also opt to make a donation to OLLI, um, especially if you're not a member and you've been enjoying these free classes, which we will um, be continuing. So I wanted to give a shout out to OLLI because I so appreciate um, they're making this class available to everybody uh, for free online. So do please feel free to make sure you share uh, this stream with your family and friends. Um, so hopefully you have set yourself up in a space that is going to be comfortable for you tonight. Um, I'm hoping you have a mat, or if you don't have a mat, um, a blanket or a towel. Um, I'm sitting up on a yoga block tonight to get my hips above my knees. Um, I'm also sitting on a blanket. Um, and you can do the same or make any adjustments that make this seat more your own, more comfortable. So maybe you're sitting with your legs extended or knees bent, um, and you're always welcome to shift your seat to make it more comfortable for you. This is a do-what-you-can kind of a class, uh, and I can't see you, so I can't say, hey, Eric, watch out, make sure that your knee is not going over your ankle there. Um, so please listen to your own body wisdom. Um, be as uh, connected to your mind and your body as we go through this practice as you can. And give yourself a break. Uh, so if you need to back off, back off on something. You know, Watch that knee, watch your shoulder. Um, on the other hand, go a little bit deeper if you need to. So if your hamstrings are just really, really tight tonight and you need to hold the hamstring stretch a little bit longer, go for it. And if you're lucky enough to be practicing with someone else, maybe you're in a shared space with family or a friend, um, remember that this practice is your own. So maybe you need to go a little bit deeper while your friend needs to take a break or vice versa. So don't worry about what's going on around you and just do what works best for your body and really be kind to yourself as you practice. Um, as I was putting together tonight's class, I was going back through you know, what different kinds of topics I've offered uh, in our time together. Um, and I was thinking about you know, all the stuff that's been going on lately. And I'm like, oh, I want to tell them about, I did some paddleboard yoga with my dog this weekend, and it was awesome. But I was outside in the woods, and the woods was awesome. And, but I also really wanted to tell you about the full moon that we had. And there was the strawberry moon and the energy of the moon. And I wanted to tell you how thrilled I am to see the Black Lives Matters flag hanging back on campus. Like all of this stuff as I'm trying to get this class together and I'm like, whoa, slow down. Now for some of us, slowing down is, um, you, don't, you don't need to slow down because you're already at a pretty even, steady pace. Others of us are, uh, a little more fast talking, fast moving, fast acting. Uh, and then we kind of all go along this you know, spectrum depending on where we are in life, in time, in space, whatever that might look like. But the one thing that we all have in common is that we all have this nervous system um, that is taking in all of this information um, around us and in our bodies and letting us know what's going on and creating feelings, making sure that things are still working for us in the body. Um, and so, as you know, in your own nervous system, when we're experiencing things that are loud and fast and ah, energetic and ever-changing, um, oftentimes the response in the nervous system is like, whoa. And, you know, it's that fight or flight response. It's, it's, it's natural. It's our instinct. It protects us. Um, Similarly, sort of like when I was preparing for class and suddenly I told myself to slow down, 
just the idea of giving myself permission to slow down made everything soften. It made me feel a little bit more quiet and a little bit more deliberate. So I want to offer up this idea tonight of going slow as we go through class. Um, for me, as the yoga teacher, it's, it, this is a practice for me because I'm a, a fast talker. So I'm going to do my best to have us go slowly through our practice tonight. And there's different stuff that comes up with going slowly. One, hopefully, is that your nervous system starts to slow down a little bit. Your blood pressure starts to drop a little bit. You're still getting lots of full oxygen and energy, but you're starting to feel a little bit more calm, a little bit more relaxed as we go slow. What also happens sometimes as we're going more slowly is that for some of us, that can be really difficult. It can be really frustrating. Um, think of, perhaps you've had this experience uh, in our current COVID time. You used to be able to go to the bank really quick, just pop in and out, you know, five minutes to go see the teller, go in and out, and now maybe it takes you 40 minutes waiting in your car before you can do something that used to be so quick and simple. For some of us, we're able to really like lean into that kind of going slow, this, this new kind of slowness that we're experiencing. And for others of us, that can be really, really difficult. Why isn't this going faster? Ah! <laughs> that can happen on the mat and off the mat. Um, and perhaps you've been noticing that in, in yourself as you've been doing uh, things a little bit differently. But as we go through our practice tonight, notice if that comes up for you. Um, and there's n it's not good or bad if you do get frustrated by things going slower. It's just merely something to observe. And if you want it to change, uh, the yoga practice is a great time to um, figure out what does the practice of slowness look like. Um, how can I take that in and uh, use it anywhere that I go rather than getting frustrated when things start to slow down. So we'll see how this goes. We'll begin by finding a comfortable seat, whatever that looks like for you tonight. Make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall on whatever you're sitting on. Extending the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Slowly bringing your shoulders up by your ears. And then just gently letting your shoulder blades drop down on the back. Pull your stomach in just a little bit to see if you can sit up a little taller. Place your hands on your knees or thighs. And close your eyes or bring them to a soft gaze. And allow yourself to settle into this seat, into this moment. And see if you can start to slow down as we still the body. See if you can. Start to quiet your mind. In this seat, if you find that it's not comfortable and maybe you need to adjust, see if you can be really slow and deliberate in any shifting to find comfort in the body. Begin to connect with your breath here, perhaps noticing it for the first time today. And see if you can start to slow your breath. And a way to think about this is think about starting from the lowest part of the belly as you inhale slowly, filling the belly letting it expand, letting the mid-chest expand, inhaling, letting the chest rise. And once your lungs are full, slowly 
taking your time. As you exhale all the air out. Take a few rounds of these slow, deep belly breaths. If you find that you're feeling a little lightheaded from the breathing, maybe begin to return back to normal. But if not, take your time letting the belly fill Letting the chest rise as you inhale, sitting up taller and brighter in your seat. Slowly exhaling from the top of the lungs all the way till you pull the belly in. Letting the face soften and the shoulders relax with every exhale. Do a couple more rounds of breath on your own. After your next exhale, do your best to let your breathing return back to normal. And don't overthink it too much. Just let go of this idea of the deep belly breathing. And see if you can find yourself here. And just notice what you feel like right now at the start of class. Check in with your body. Check in with your mind. And check in with your energy. Still sitting up nice and tall. Bring your palms together in prayer position in front of your heart. Let the outer upper arms roll back as the chest comes forward. We'll begin our practice together by chanting the sound of Om, the sound of the universe, the sound of oneness. And we'll chant it just one time, as loudly or as softly as you'd like. Take a full exhale, and a deep inhale for Om. Oh. Release your hands, place them on your thighs, and gently allow your eyes to flutter open as you keep sitting up nice and tall in your seat. Keep the shoulders resting down on the back. And then, taking your time, bring your right ear to the right shoulder. And slowly, deliberately, begin to drop your chin down towards your chest. Notice what's going on in the mind here. Is this a challenge for you? Are we going your normal pace? Once you reach the left side, Take your time and slowly begin to drop your chin towards your chest as you work your way over towards the right side, finding length in the back of the neck, and the shoulders. One more round to both sides. So really slowly drop the chin down towards the chest. Keep the shoulders level as you take your time here. And if this is slower than you usually go, maybe notice if you're getting into some muscles that you don't typically connect with. Once you reach the left, drop the chin and work your way over.
towards the right. Once you reach the right, bring your head back to center. And again, sit up nice and tall in your seat. All right. Um, you can remain sitting on your block if you want to. For me, it's a little bit high for this next posture, um, which is going to be a gentle twist. So we're still sitting up nice and tall. And right fingertips are going to come behind you to the floor behind you. That's why I removed the block, because I'm too high to connect to the floor if I'm on a block. Left hand comes to the right knee. Sit up nice and tall as you twist to the right. Take your time as you work your way through center. And then we'll do the other side. And we're just warming up the spine, so it doesn't have to be deep. Left hand comes to the floor. Right hand to the opposite knee. Sit up nice and tall and twist to the left. On your next exhale, unwind back to center. Nice job. And still sitting up nice and tall. I'm going to move my blocks to the side here. Take your left hand and plant it on the floor beside you. Turn and look down at the left hand. As you inhale, float the right arm slowly up overhead. Create lots of space between your neck and your shoulders. And then you can either stay here looking down at the hand or to get some movement in the neck, you can turn your head to look towards me. And then if your neck allows, maybe look up towards the lifted hand. And if you look up towards that hand and you think, oh, that really doesn't make me feel very well, feel free to look back down towards the floor or towards me. On your next exhale, we're going to slowly bring the right hand all the way through and down to the floor as you sweep the left arm slowly up overhead, thinking about space between your ears and shoulders, looking down at the right hand. Lots of energy in those lifted fingertips. And then turn your head to look towards me. And if you can, maybe up towards the lifted hand. Make sure you're breathing. And on an exhale, make your way back up to center. Nice job. Let's move on to our hands and knees in a tabletop position. This is a great time to cushion your knees if they are tender. I will demonstrate here with my blanket. You can also always fold your mat over. We're aligning the hips over the knees and the shoulders over the wrists. This is called tabletop position. Walk your hands forward just a couple of inches to really open up through the wrists. Bring your awareness to your tailbone. And as you inhale, you're going to stick the tailbone up, drop the belly, drop your chest, and then lastly, look up towards the ceiling for cow pose. As you exhale, you're going to tuck your tailbone, pull the lower abdominals in, pull the belly and then round the shoulders, hollow the chest, and tuck the chin for cat pose. Again, slowly like a wave, inhale, tipping the pelvis so the tailbone sticks up, the belly drops, chest drops, head lifts so you look up towards the sky. Exhale to tuck the tailbone, pull the belly in, press the shoulder blades up, tuck the chin. And one more round in your own breath and in your own time. Maybe you, you want to go even slower than what I'm offering up. Or maybe now's your chance to just go a little bit more quickly. We exhale with the shoulder blades up towards the ceiling with a nice round spine. And after your next exhale, come back to a neutral spine, flat back. All right. So get engaged in the legs here. So make sure you feel your shins pressing into the floor and that you're engaged in the inner thighs. Keep your left hand grounded and slowly inhale to reach the right arm straight ahead of you. All right, stay nice and strong in the belly here. Take your time as slowly as you can. We're going to extend the left leg directly behind. Notice as we slowly 
come into this balance table all the muscles that need to do extra work here because you're not using momentum. Keep hugging in at the belly so that the back is nice and flat and you're not hanging out in the low back. And then as steady and slow as you can, on an exhale, you're going to bring the elbow and knee underneath the body. Maybe they connect. But think about pressing into the left hand to round the shoulders so you're creating more space under the body. As you inhale, slowly take your time. Maybe it's smooth or maybe it's wobbly. Either way, great job for trying it out. We're going to do that again. Exhale, bring the elbow towards the knee, tuck the chin, and inhale to extend nice and long. Gently lower your hand and knee down to the floor. Take any movements that you need to to take care of your body. Sometimes the low back or the wrists can be a little bit tender. And actually, this time around, my wrist was feeling a little tender. So I'm going to demonstrate. If this is a little intense on the wrists, you can always elevate the heels of your hands to find more space in the wrists, like so. So find your way back into tabletop. If your wrists weren't bothering you, you don't need to elevate the heels of your hands. Nice and strong and steady. Press into the right hand as you extend the left arm directly out in front of you. All right. Get nice and steady here. Take your time as you slowly extend the right leg directly behind you. We're trying to keep the hips level here so it helps to flex the right foot with the toes towards the floor and the sole of your foot pressing to the back of the room. Make sure you're staying strong in the belly so that your low back is protected. All right, here we go. Take your time as you exhale. Bend the elbow and knee. Let the shoulders round. Hug everything in underneath the body as steady as you can be. Slowly as you inhale, reach the arm and leg out. Maybe this side is more steady or maybe it's a little wobblier than the other side. All right, we're going to do it again. Exhale slowly. Take your time. Bring the elbow and knee to meet. Tuck the chin round the shoulders. And as you inhale, slowly start to reach the arm and leg back out. Nice work. Lower the hand and knee down to the floor. Once again, take any movements that you might need to to Feel more comfort in the hips or in the wrists. Child's pose can be nice. Oh, nice work. All right. Find yourself uh, still in this tabletop position on all fours. And as you exhale, move the hips back towards the heels, coming into child's pose. So fingertips are extended towards the top of the mat. Hips are moving towards your heels. As you inhale, come on up to table on all fours once again. Tuck your toes, press into your hands, and as you inhale, lift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. Find a nice long spine here. Your hands are shoulder width apart or wider, and your feet are hips distance apart and parallel. Make sure you're breathing fully and completely here. As you exhale, lower your knees back down to the floor, moving the hips back towards the heels, coming into child's pose. Nice long spine. As you inhale, come back up to tabletop. Tuck your toes. As you exhale, take your time, moving the hips up and back to downward facing dog. From this down dog, as you exhale, glide forward to plank, top of a push up. So you're lining up the shoulders over the wrists. You might have to scoot your toes back a little bit to make sure that your legs are straight. But make sure your core is engaged, you're pushing your heels back, tailbone is tucked. And then keep your hands and feet where they are in this plank. And press into the hands as you move your hips back so that you come into downward dog. But you still have that same foundation that you had 
for plank pose. Walk your feet up towards your hands. So you're coming up towards the top of your mat in a forward fold. Feet are hips distance apart and parallel. We're hinging forward at the hips. Let your head relax. Let your shoulders relax. If you need to have a bend in the knees, go for it. Let your hands connect to something, maybe the floor or a block. Let the crown of your head point towards the floor and just gently nod your head yes and shake it no. See if you can use the weight of your head to loosen up the back of your neck. Come to stillness with the head. Bend your knees, press into your feet. As you inhale, reach your arms wide. Standing nice and strong, come all the way up, arms up overhead. And as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Nice job. Find yourself in mountain pose here. So Tadasana, feet are hips distance apart and parallel. All four corners of the feet are pressing into the mat. Bring your hands to your hips and stand up nice and tall. Bring a little soft bend to the knees, and we're going to engage the abdominal muscles. I'm going to give you a little side view. Soft bend, hands are on the hips. Stick your tailbone out, like when we're doing cat-cow, and pull the belly in. Keep that lower abdominal tucked in. If you have to touch it like I'm doing here, do that. Stay nice and strong, and then neutralize the spine so that your tailbone's more pointing towards the floor. That should create some engagement in the upper abdominals. And then straighten the legs and stand up nice and tall with this nice, strong core. Close your eyes for a moment and find yourself in this really powerful posture. Let the crown of your head reach up towards the ceiling as your shoulders relax. Check in with how your body feels. Check in with your mind. Gently allow your eyes to flutter open. Stay nice and strong in the legs and in the core. As you inhale, float your arms up overhead and lock your thumbs. And make this an active engagement. So uh, you'll notice I have my thumbs hooked. And then I'm pulling against them to create space and engagement in the shoulders. So I've got space between my ears and my shoulders. All right. Nice and strong here. Inhale to get a little bit taller. As you exhale, we'll arch over towards the right side. Keep that left foot really rooted. Full breaths. Really breathe into, especially the, the left side of the rib cage. Nice. All right, here we go. Inhale. Come back to center. Stay nice and engaged through the thumbs. And find some length. Inhaling to get taller. Exhaling to arch over towards the left side. And do your best to find equal length on both sides of the body here. So you may find that you can collapse over like this really easily in your body, but we're looking for some space and some engagement here. Inhale and come back to center. Reach your fingertips up towards the sky. Stay nice and strong in the belly. As you exhale, sit back for Utkatasana, or Fierce Pose. In this posture, you're shifting your hips back. The weight is really more in your heels than in the toes. And you can bring your palms together at your heart. Stay really engaged in the thighs here. Nice job. Steady breath. I always mention in my classes that I struggle with this posture, which is chair pose, utkatasana, not because of the physical elements of it, but because of what goes on up in here. There's a lot of um, not as much positive reinforcement as there should be for this posture. So what a great opportunity if you have, if you're, why aren't we going faster? Why aren't we doing a different posture? See if you can settle into this moment, knowing that it's bound to change. 
Uh, and there's probably some goodness in this for you right now. All right, exhale, straighten the legs, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward. Let the head relax. Bend your knees, inhale, reach your arms wide as you come all the way up. Exhale and bring your hands to your heart. Nice job. Coming up to the top of your mat if you're not there already. Find a mountain pose once again. So this nice, tall, engaged, strong posture and bring your awareness to your left foot and begin to shift your weight so that you're really pouring it more into the left side than into the right stand up nice and tall and take your time see if you can start to get your right foot to come up in front of you and maybe you're balancing on that right toe or maybe you're able to lift your right foot off of the floor your knee can be bent or straight, whatever works for you in this moment. Don't worry about how high your foot is off the floor or how straight your leg is. Maybe your toe is still connected to the mat. What we're interested in here is being really deliberate and slow and grounded. If you're able to get your leg up higher, go for it. And then from here, wherever here is for you, gently and slowly start to bring the right foot behind you to a high lunge. So that means the back heel is lifted. And maybe once you find that lunge, you need to do a little bit of adjusting to make it more balanced for you. Take your time as you do that. This is the slow piece. Feel free to scoot your left foot more towards the edge of the mat or scoot your right toes behind you more. When you have found your crescent lunge, Anjane Asana, release your hands by your sides with your palms facing straight ahead. If you really want to get more stretch uh, in your right hip and quad, scoot your right toes behind you a little bit more to go a little bit deeper. Keep your front knee aligned with the front ankle. All right, nice and strong. Keep hugging everything into the midline. Inhale and float your arms up overhead. And once again, connect your thumbs, finding space between your ears and shoulders. And remember, this is engaged, so like let the thumbs pull on one another here so you're a little bit stronger through the shoulders. You can stay right here or try a little bit of a back bend, testing your balance. If you find as you arch back that you start to wobble a little bit, think about hugging in at the thighs pulling the belly in, the power of your thumbs. All right, inhale to come back to center. Nice job. Bring your hands to your hips. Press into the front foot. Come on up to the top of your mat. Shake it out a little bit if you need to. And we'll find the other side. Begin in mountain pose. Tall and strong. And if you need to find where those lower abdominals are to get engaged, feel free to Poke around. Stand up nice and tall. Feel that right foot really rooted this time. Start to shift your weight. Take your time as you free the weight from the left foot and we're bringing it to the front. Maybe the toe stays connected or maybe you can start to lift the foot off of the floor. If your knee is bent, that's totally fine. If you're able to straighten it, go for it. Wherever you're at, please be kind to yourself. Give yourself credit for trying this out tonight. Maybe this is your favorite, or maybe this is a really rough one for you this evening. Either way, I'm really glad that you're here trying this out. Take your time as you slowly work the left foot behind you, coming into a high lunge on this side. So that means the back heel is lifted. And feel free to make any adjustments, but see if you can make them slow and mindful as you find yourself in this high lunge. We have the front knee over the front ankle. The back heel is lifted. And you can scoot your back toes back a little further if you really want to start opening up through your left quad and hip flexor. Release your palms down by your sides, facing straight ahead. Be really tall and proud in this lunge. Take your time as you inhale and float the arms up overhead. 
Once again, connecting the thumbs, creating some engagement through the shoulders. Stay strong in the belly. And you can either stay here or a little bit of a back bend, opening the chest up towards the ceiling. Still bending into the front knee. On an exhale, come back to center. Nice. Bring your hands to your hips. Press into the front foot and come on up. Shake it out a little bit if you need to. And find yourself in mountain pose at the top of your mat. Ah, stand up nice and tall. Now, because it's June, we have solstice coming, which means we really need to get on top of our sun salutation practice. So we will be practicing some sun salutations as we go through the month. But we're going to start out slow tonight, of course. So find this mountain at the top of your mat, pulling the energy up from your feet through your legs all the way through the torso and the crown of the head. As you inhale, float your arms up. Lift your gaze so you're looking up towards the ceiling if you can. As you exhale, slowly hinge at the hips and swan dive forward. Take your time. Use the strength in your legs to help you get down. Feel free to use a block or your shins if your hands uh, aren't connecting to the floor. Let your head relax. Let the shoulders relax here. And then taking your time, step your right foot back to a lunge. So we have the front knee over the front ankle. Back knee is lifted and the back heel is lifted. Hands are connected to the floor. If you have blocks, this is a nice place to use them. Remember, you can switch whatever dimension you want. If you don't have blocks available and the floor is far away, you can steeple your fingers or you can try other kinds of, um, you know, if you have other types of boxes or pillows or something like that that you can attempt. But note when you're using the blocks, um, your weight is not poured into them. So it should be easy for someone to remove the block from your hand because you're so strong in your legs and in your core. Nice long neck here. And then plant the right hand on the floor or on a block. And as you inhale, sweep the left fingertips up for a twist. Exhale as you release your left hand back down. And make your way back to plank, top of a push-up. You're welcome to drop to your knees first. Or if you want to step the foot back, you can try that out. But we're ending up at the top of a push-up. And this might be plenty for you tonight, but if you want an additional challenge, you're welcome to try hovering your right foot up off of the floor. If you do that, just make sure your plank stays nice and solid. Everyone should be looking out on the floor ahead of your mat. If your right foot is lifted, lower it. And then from here, you can either lower down in one straight line like a reverse push-up, or you can join me in dropping your knees, pointing your toes, and slowly using your arms to lower you down to the floor. Wherever you are, take your time. Toes are pointed, tops of the feet are rooted, hands are underneath your shoulders. Stay strong in the abdominals and as you exhale, gently peel your chest up off of the mat. Exhale as you lower back down. And then tuck your toes, and we're going to make our way back to Downward Facing Dog. You can do a push-up into plank. You can come into tabletop first. But take your time as you work your way back to Auto Mukha Svanasana, the Downward Dog. And when you get there, pedal the feet out. So alternate bringing each heel closer to the floor, moving the hips. Come to stillness with the legs. Take a look at your hands and step your right foot forward to a lunge. Now this might take a couple of steps. You might need to use your hand to help you get there. This is the hardest part of the sun salutation. But make sure that you wind up in a legitimate lunge. Maybe you need to drop the knee first to get there. But find a nice, long, solid lunge. 
And then kick off the back foot and come forward to a forward fold. Let the head relax. And then bend your knees, inhale, reach your arms wide. Come on up, arms up overhead. Connect your palms and exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Nice job. Shake it out a little bit, get some water if you need to. Um, that was one half of a sun salutation, which we'll talk about more in a couple weeks, but you need to keep practicing it. So that's side one. We only have one other side to go. So find yourself at the top of your mat in your mountain, nice and strong through the core and the legs. Inhale and float your arms up. Take a look up towards the sky. Exhale, slowly. Take your time as you work your way to a forward fold, Uttanasana. This time, gently step your left foot back to a lunge. Make any adjustments that you need to to feel more secure here. Take some full breaths. Find space through the hip. And remember, if you're using blocks or with the hands connected to the floor, really keep your strength through your legs and your abdominals with the hands with, as just a little extra balance. Left hand comes to the floor or a block. As you inhale, sweep the right fingertips up. See if you can look up towards the lifted hand, spiraling your chest. As you exhale, slowly lower the right hand back down and work your way back to plank, top of a push-up. Again, do feel free to drop the knees if you need to. Otherwise, we have the shoulders over the wrists. Tailbone is pointed towards the heels and you're looking out on the floor ahead of the mat. You can stay here or hover the left foot, staying nice and strong, making sure that you're breathing and being kind in the body and the mind. If your left foot is lifted, slowly lower it. And then everyone take your time as you lower yourself down to the floor, either dropping your knees first or lowering down in a reverse push-up. Legs are straight, toes are pointed. Release your arms down by your sides with your palms face up. Squeeze the legs together. On an exhale, lift everything you can up off of the mat. Feet, fingertips, maybe your chest, knees. And as you exhale, lower back down. Place your hands underneath each shoulder. Tuck your toes. And we're going to go back to downward dog slowly, either through plank or through tabletop. Yogi's choice, whatever it is, make it slow. <laughs> Pedal the feet out once you get into your down dog. Come to stillness with your legs. Take a look at the hands. This time we're going to step the left foot forward to a lunge. And maybe you can take a nice big sweeping step forward, or maybe you need to do some little steps and give yourself a little boost. Any way you do it, as long as you're doing it the best way for you, it's perfect. End up with the knee over the ankle and the back leg straight. Blocks can be nice here. Find a nice long neck. All right, nice and strong in the legs. Step the back foot forward so that you're in a forward fold at the top of your mat. Bend your knees, inhale, and reach your arms wide as you come all the way up. Exhale, and hands come to your heart. Shake it out a little bit. Give yourself a break. Really, really nice job with all of that, especially the stepping forward into a lunge thing takes a lot of practice, so we'll continue to work on that, but good job for trying it out. All right, find yourself in the middle of your mat. And once again, mountain pose, so nice and tall and strong. Make a connection between your left foot and the floor. And we're going to work our way into tree pose, so slowly. Press your weight into the left foot as you free the right foot. 
and very deliberately place the foot wherever makes sense for you on this side tonight. So your options are your ankle, your calf, or if you're feeling really grounded tonight, maybe you can even grab the foot and place it on the inner thigh. But wherever you are, you're taking your time, you're grounded in the left foot, pressing the right foot into the leg as the leg presses into the foot, and bring your palms together in prayer in front of your heart. Now remember, tree can look like this, or like this, or like this. They're all beautiful trees. If you're feeling a little wobbly, keep hugging everything into the midline. And then together, taking our time, let's keep the palms pressing together. Follow them with your gaze, if you can, as the hands reach up towards the ceiling. Whoa, keep breathing, nice job. And then extend the branches out so you have lots of space in the shoulders. Nice. Take your time as you bring the palms back together once again, exhaling to bring them down to your heart. Knee comes forward as you lower the right foot to the floor and shake it out a little bit. So I know for some of you, tree pose is a totally new posture. Um, and so taking your time getting into it might not be as challenging as it is for some folks who are like, I know tree pose. I know exactly what we're doing. Um, this is your opportunity to go slower. Guarantee next time it'll be faster. So take advantage of it this time around and stand up nice and tall. Feel your right foot firmly grounded and rooted as you start to shift your weight. Left foot becomes nice and free, and you decide, taking your time at the ankle, the calf, or the inner thigh. Press the foot into the leg, the leg into the foot, strong in the belly. Palms connect in front of your heart. And remember, pressing the palms together helps with the balance here, a little extra engagement. And then keeping the palms pressed together, Start to lift the hands in front of you. If you can, follow them with your eyes. And then grow the branches out, finding space in the shoulders. Tall, strong. Slowly bring the palms together. Exhale as you bring them down to your heart. Bring the knee forward, releasing the foot. Shake it out a little bit. Nice job. Make your way up to the top of your mat, finding mountain pose one more time. As you inhale, slowly sweep the arms up overhead. As you exhale, hinge at the hips and slowly swan dive all the way forward. Walk your way back to a downward facing dog. You can always go from plank to down dog if that's a preference for you. Nice long spine, bend the knees a little bit here as you press into the hands and move the hips up and back even further. This helps to lengthen the spine here. As you exhale, lower your knees down to the floor. Point the toes and step your right foot forward to a lunge. Feel free to cushion that back knee if you need to. Stand up nice and tall on the back knee, pressing actively into the front foot. As you exhale, shift the weight in the hips forward as much as is comfortable for you, and float the arms up overhead slowly. Keep the shoulders relaxed. As you exhale, release your fingertips down towards the floor or blocks. Move your hips back and flex your right toes up towards the ceiling for a runner's stretch or Ardha Hanumanasana. You're extending the torso over the right leg. Bend into the front knee once again and let's switch sides. So right knee comes back as the left foot steps forward. And if your right knee is the one that needs cushioning, go for it. And when you're ready, come on up to standing on the back knee. Hands are on the hips. 
As you exhale, shift the weight in the hips forward. Notice I'm creating a wider angle on this right side, opening up the thigh and hip flexor. Nice and strong as you slowly float the arms up overhead, relaxing the shoulders on the back. As you exhale, let the fingertips come down towards the floor or your blocks. Move your hips back as you flex your left toes towards the ceiling. We're trying to straighten this left leg, so if you need to give it a little adjustment with your hand to get there, that's fine. Think about a nice long spine and torso extending over the left leg. All right, bend into the front knee once again. And we're going to scoot around to a seat on the mat. All right. Scoot on up to the top of your mat so that your toes are up at the very top. Hands are behind the thighs as you sit up nice and tall. Nice and strong in the belly, tucking the ribs in as you exhale, tip back for boat pose. See if you can get your feet off of the mat. Bring your shins to parallel. And this might be plenty for you tonight. And if it is good for you, keep hanging out here and make sure that you can breathe. If you want a little added challenge, extend the arms up overhead. They're actually more at an angle, so it's like reaching towards me with some space between the hands, nice and strong. All right, lower your feet to the floor. Sit up nice and tall. Keeping your feet grounded and taking your time, slowly lower your spine down to the mat. And think about uh, placing each vertebra in alignment on the mat as you lower down. So use your abdominals and think about each little vertebra lining up. And once you can't go any further, you can release yourself down to the mat. Walk your feet in so that the knees are bent and your feet are flat on the mat and release your arms down by your sides. Your feet are hips distance apart. Feel your shoulders grounded into the mat. Palms are face down. Press into the feet and slowly, taking your time as you inhale, lift the hips up off of the mat for a very slow lifting bridge pose, as high as you can get. And on your exhale, slowly start to lower the hips back down towards the floor. Take your time. And once again, as you inhale, begin to slowly lift them back up. You're pressing into the feet. You're pressing into the arms for stability here. Once you've gone as high up as the hip, hips can possibly go, exhale and slowly lower them back down to the mat. Hug your knees in towards your chest and gently rock from side to side or front to back. <laughs> Extend your left leg straight out on the mat as you hug your right knee in towards your chest. Extend your right arm out to a T and gently using the left hand, we're going to twist, bringing the right hip to stack over the left. And you can be looking up towards the ceiling, or to enhance the twist, you can turn your head towards the right side. I encourage you to flex uh, the foot on the bent knee. On an exhale, unwind back to center, hugging the knees in. Bring your hands around the left shin as you extend the right leg out on the floor. Extend your left arm out to a T, and using the right hand, gently twist towards the other side, keeping your left foot flexed. And you can look up towards the ceiling or turn your head towards the left side. And 
gently unwind back to center, hugging the knees in towards your chest. Place both feet flat on the floor. Extend your right foot up towards the ceiling. And let your hands go up as high on the leg as is comfortable and still keeping the shoulders away from your ears. Pull the leg a little closer to the body. Stay really active in this left leg, keeping the left foot pressing into the floor. And then lower the right foot to the mat as you extend the left foot up. Once again, moving the hands up the leg wherever is most comfortable, actively pressing into the right foot, gently pull the left leg a little closer to the body. Release your left foot down to the mat. Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees go wide for Supta Baddha Konasana or reclined bound angle pose. Shoulders are relaxed down on your back. Arms are by your sides with your palms face up. Let yourself sink into this hip opener, finding softness through the pelvis. And this is going to be our final resting posture before Shavasana. And if you like this posture, if this feels good for you, stay here. Do this for Shavasana. This is a nice, a nice way to finish up. If you'd like a more traditional version of Shavasana, use your hands to gently guide the knees together and then extend your legs straight out on the mat with your feet mat width apart. Let your feet just relax out to the sides. Keep your shoulders nestled down on your back. And again, the backs of your hands are off the mat with your palms face up. Don't hesitate to put on socks or grab your blanket if you need it. And just breathe and relax into this Shavasana. I'm watching the time for you, so I will ring the bell when we're done. Feel that firm support of the floor beneath you and just let this slow practice integrate into your body tonight. Allow your breath to deepen. And bring a little bit of movement back into your toes and your fingers. On an inhale, reach your arms up overhead and extend your legs out nice and long for one 
long final stretch. Hug your knees in towards your chest as you roll on to your right side. Take your time. I know it's tempting to just sit up. <laughs> but using as little effort as possible, gently make your way up to a seat with your eyes closed, sitting up nice and tall. And when you find that seat, bring your palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra, in front of your heart. I hope that you have been able to embrace our slow practice tonight, our sloga, uh, and that maybe you can embrace this idea of um, having some control over your nervous system. So when things get a little bit too jarring or exciting or just too much, slowing the breath, slowing your thoughts, slowing your pace can help with that. And if you find yourself in line at the grocery store, finding it going slower than usual and that it's challenging, uh, you internally recognize that maybe that's your yoga practice in that moment, to find some peace, to let yourself slow down uh, and be in the moment. We'll close by chanting the sound of Om just one time. Take a full exhale and an inhale for Om. light in me honors and acknowledges the light in each of you with great respect. Namaste. I'm so glad that you made it to class tonight. Thanks so much for your effort, and uh, I will look forward to next week. Take care of yourself. Be well. <laughs>